let's just get right into it guys. The second time I'm filming this video, I really wanted to wear my hair in a fresh twist out so you guys could see the color. Like, the color is amazing. It makes me feel renewed and refreshed and the cut and everything, it's awesome. So I want to share with you guys my experience, a stylist, and also some tips that I learned along the way because this whole thing was a really big learning process for me. I want to pass that information on to you guys because I know it will help you guys if you decide to do the same process or just even go to a stylist in general. So first of all, I want to talk about why I colored. I've been wanting to color my hair for a really long time. Any of my other videos, you'll see me kind of experimenting with the hair chalks, the Kevin Murphy color bugs, and I do have a first impression for that. If you want to check that out, I'll link it for you. And I just became obsessed with the color, and I've always been obsessed with ombre, and I just, I wanted something different. So the first reason is because I just wanted to color my hair, so I decided to go for it. I love my natural black color, but it's good to have change. And I also wanted the experience. You can't learn new things about your hair if you don't experiment. I just suggest if you guys ever want to do anything, don't be afraid to do it. Just do it. You have one life and it's, you know, your hair will grow back. Maybe it won't, <laughs> but make sure you go to a stylist that you can trust and won't burn your hair off. So yeah, okay. I was confident enough in my ability to grow my hair back that if something did happen within the process, I was like, okay, whatever, it won't be a big deal. I'll just cut it off and start again. So, it, you know, I just try not to get too attached to my hair, even though I do love my hair, but I try not to like be like, oh, I can't damage it. I can't do anything to it. It's this precious thing. Like, no. Even though after I dyed it, I was freaking out. I was like, oh my God, what did I do? Oh my God, it's this precious thing. I damaged it. Oh my God. But you know, you get the point. Like my mindset is in just keep moving forward forward and keep trying new things so that you can learn more. So let's talk about the stylist in the salon. I know you guys want to talk about that and I'm really excited. I reached out to my cousin who has curly natural hair. She's about, I think she's a 3C, I think. Her curls are looser than mine. I was like, okay, well you have a stylist. Who do you go to? <coughs> Sorry. And before we set up an appointment, I was like, okay, hold up. We have different hair textures here. Can she do my hair? Like, does she work with thicker textures? And she's like, oh yeah, 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 it's fine, it's fine. She does it all the time. And I was like, okay, we'll see. So the stylist's name is Krish, and her salon is in New Jersey. My cousin has been going there forever, and so I just, you know, I trust my cousin, so I trusted Krish. I'll put her information in the description box if you guys want to check her out. She is a one-woman show. She's very good at what she does, and she's by appointment only. So before I went to the stylist, I knew what I wanted. I knew that I wanted a balayage treatment, which is basically like natural highlights, and some could call it like similar to an ombre kind of look. I didn't want an ombre though. I didn't want like all the bottoms one color. I really wanted this dimensional look that the balayage creates. I did a lot of research online. I looked into images of women who had balayage treatments and basically collected images of looks that I liked and looks that I did not like. So I compiled these images and also like paragraphs to describe the images into a PDF and I sent it to the stylist before my appointment. So for example, I said something like, I would like a balayage treatment. I want my base color to stay the same, meaning I didn't want her to dye my entire head of hair. I wanted my natural color to stay and then I wanted her to put the balayage highlights on top. And the reason for that is because I want it so that when my hair grows out, my roots grow out, there's, I don't have to go back to get like it touched up or anything like that. It'll be like a smooth transition. I would like you know light brown highlights in my hair similar to this look and then I'd put the image and I want it done in this manner with this color and then I would just put like the different images and explain like why I put the image and what I liked about the hair in the image so I wanted this technique but I like this color and I want it done in this way and I want to be able to wear it in my curly wash and go state and also in my twist out state. So I put an image of what my hair looks like in its curly state and then I put an image of what my hair looked like in its twist out state. So there was tons of images, tons of direction. I knew what I wanted. After I explained everything that I wanted with images, I also attached pictures of women with the hair color that I did not want. So after that I said, so for your reference, these are some images that I do not want. So it was like very harsh ombre looks or, you know, I told her that I wanted my highlights to be very toned. I didn't want it orangey or red. So then there were images of, you know, women who had dyed hair that was like more orangey and red. And I said, I don't want the color to go into this. And so basically what I'm trying to tell you is that I, su I supplied pictures of two extremes. What I definitely do want 
and what I definitely do not want. And the reason that I did that is because a stylist can't read your mind and so if you say, hi, I want a balayage type of ombre type of thing, they're, they're creating this image of their mind of what they think you want. And it might not coincide with the image in your head of what you want. So you definitely wanna make sure that you give them an image of what you want and what you don't want and then they can kind of figure out and try and give you as close to what you want as possible. So that's what I did. I put all this into like this big, huge, annoying, obnoxious PDF and I sent it to her via text and via email. The day of the appointment, I went in and I was really tired so I had my hair in like this horrific old twist out that was borderline locking at the time and so she proceeded to apply the color. I believe she used a bleach and bleached my hair and then she put the color on top of the bleach. After she did all that she rinsed it out and then detangled my hair and then she proceeded to define every single curl on my head. Now this is where the cut comes in. So a lot of times if you go to a salon and get a cut they'll just like you know define your overall hair and then they'll like trim it. She went in and she took off like every individual strand out of the section and she defined it. So my head was just full of all these individual defined and detangled curls. It was the most detailed thing I have ever seen any stylist do. And it took her probably like two hours Maybe, I don't even know, it took a really long time. Like at the end of it, I was just like exhausted and I was just sitting in a chair and I felt so bad because at that point she was like, your hair is definitely the most hair I've ever done on one person's head. And I was like, I'm so sorry. She's like, it's fine, it's fine. Like she was totally cool with it. But I felt so bad because I was tired just sitting in a chair watching her. It was crazy. She, you know, she just kept doing it. She was really patient. She didn't like rush through it. She just continued throughout my entire head. I was really impressed by that. So then after all uh, my curls were defined and they were just kind of flopping there, <laughs> she kind of uh, pruned my hair like it was a bush. Like you know how landscapers take like shears and they just like prune a bush around the edges. She kind of did that. Like she took each individual curl and she like clipped it and she like maybe pulled it out just a little bit to see where it would hang and then she would clip that. She was just like making this artistic shape in her head. Obviously she asked me like what kind of shape I wanted and I basically wanted to because I have not anymore. <laughs> my hair was really heavy on top and it kind of just made my hair slope down and look really tired. My head, my hair looked really tired. Like it was just dragging its butt. I was like, I want to keep my length. I just want to add layers so that I can have this like curved shape to my hair. I did keep my length just to show you guys still here just kind of shaped it up so that my hair would look fresher and perkier. Like a nice perky butt. I wanted a nice perky butt on the back of my head. No cheeks. So basically overall, if you wanted to go to your stylist and get something similar done, it's a balayage treatment. Keeping my base color natural, no dyeing of that at all. Just kind of like balayage highlights throughout. Keeping the highlights very toned. I've washed my hair quite frequently already and lots of deep conditioning for my highlights because they, they're really dry and I love how my hair has just really toned down. The color has definitely toned down. It was so bright before. Some people wanted to know what the color was so I texted Krish. She used the Pravana line lighter with 20 volume and Olaplex to prevent breakage and a 7BV toner plus shine glaze at the very end to close up the cuticle. There you go. So throughout all this, the excitement, the devastation, and then now the just pure joy in my hair color, I learned a lot of tips that I wanna share with you guys in case you wanna you go to a salon to get any treatment really. I mean, these tips will help for any treatment, but you know, if you wanna get a color or a cut, or really whatever. These are, in my opinion, the best ways to deal with going to a salon. <sighs> a stylist can't read your mind, so a lot of this has to do with transparency and really just kind of having confidence in yourself when you go to a stylist. So the first tip, and I told you that I did this, is send pictures of what you like and what you don't like, whether that's before the appointment or just having it in hand when you go there. Make sure you compile a list or a PDF full of pictures. It's what you love and what you do not love and what you definitely don't want and make sure that you label them clearly 
And even if you want to be even more detailed like me, you can add descriptions of why you like the thing. Like for example, I want this treatment. Here's an image of why I like this with this color. I don't want you to take it here. I definitely don't want this because just make sure that you put pictures of what you like and what you don't like and explain why. Yeah, the more detail you can bring, the better. Also, if you're emailing that information to your stylist, that's great, but also have it at the date of the appointment just so that like when you sit down in the chair you can kind of have it in hand and reiterate okay so just in case you forgot I want this color and just so it's fresh in their mind because number one who knows if they actually will read it and number two you know just the peace of mind of you sitting in the chair and knowing that you just went over it just don't be afraid to do that because you really want to make sure that you're getting what you want and you want to make sure that you and the stylist are definitely on the same page before the processes start i loved everything about the visit and that's why i'm recommending her to you guys but like i said i went there with my hair in a twist out it was like locking it was kind of old looking and it was just it went through a lot the day before and so I'm just very particular with how I detangle my hair You know, I have tons of videos dedicated to how I like to detangle I really just wasn't a fan of how my hair was detangled But I didn't do anything to let her know that and that was my biggest mistake Like there's no way that a stylist can know that you like or don't like something if you don't speak up about it And personally, I think I was like a little afraid or intimidated to say something because you know She's a stylist and I didn't want to offend her but in hindsight Krish would have not like, now that I know her personality, I wish that I had spoken up about it because I could tell that she's just somebody who's extremely easygoing and she would not have been offended at all. She's definitely open to like what you like to do with your hair and she's not one of those stylists who are like rigid and like, oh, it's my way or the highway bounce, you know what I mean? I wish that I had guts to say something like, oh, I'm actually kind of particular in how I detangle my hair. Do you mind if I just kind of do it real quick? And that would have just kind of put my mind at ease. Um, but you know, hindsight's 2020, and that's why I'm sharing the information with you guys. I always suggest when you're going to a stylist, just go with your hair already detangled. It'll just save you a lot of um, anxiety because I know that's kind of one of the biggest things that we as naturals worry about. It's like going to the stylist, are they going to like detangle the hair in the way that we like? We're particular. And uh, one way to combat that is just to go with your hair already detangled. So if you're going to the stylist and you're going through a process and they have to wet your hair and then they have to re-detangle it there at the salon, I would suggest you just saying, before they start to comb your hair, just saying, oh, hey, you know, I'm, I'm kind of particular. Do you mind if I comb my hair and then I'll sit back in the chair? And they should have no problem with that. I honestly don't know why I didn't say that because sitting in the stylist chair, I haven't been there in like six years and it was a little bit like, number one, I was just like, ah, do whatever you want, it's all good. Like I was too tired to care. And number two, I didn't want to offend. There was a lot going on in my mind, but I do wish that I had spoken up. So I'm just saying that to you guys. Don't be afraid to offer to detangle your own hair. And I'm sure the stylist won't mind and they'll be happy because they don't have to detangle your hair, so. So that kind of goes into the third tip that I have, which is don't worry about offending your stylist. A lot of times the stylist probably won't even be offended. I think it's mostly in our minds. Regardless, even if the stylist is gonna be offended, it's your hair and you're the one who has to walk out of the salon that day and wear it on your head. I mean, you can be respectful about it. I think that's completely appropriate to let them know that. And just don't be afraid that you're gonna offend because at the end of the day, you're the one paying for the service and you're the one who has to walk out with that hair. <laughs> so nobody else has to wear it but you. So just remember that. My fourth tip is make sure that you ask questions. I wish that I had asked more questions. It's really empowering to know what's going to happen to your hair and so you should always ask questions about the process. I have definitely noticed differences in my hair. Like I said earlier, it's very dry. Like that's for sure. It's super dry um, on, on the colored parts. And you know, where there was a little bit of breakage from the detangling, I can notice that. But honestly, it's nothing that I can't work with. Like luckily going into the salon appointment, my hair was in really good shape like it was very healthy very strong and so it was able to endure a lot of the process so make sure that if you are doing any type of color or anything drastic like that that your hair is in a really healthy state because it's going to take a lot out of your hair especially if you're doing like a lighter color like this so i wanted to open up this video to you guys so that i could make sure that i answer any specific questions so let's see here did the color make your hair damaged the color parts obviously not as healthy as I used to be. I still have really strong, healthy hair under here. I knew that I was risking that when I, you know, decided to color my hair. I was ready for the worst and I'm happy that it's not more damaged. So I have to change my technique slightly, but 
I love it. You know, it's a little bit of a sacrifice, but I think it's worth it. I love it. Did the color affect your curl pattern? I showed that in the last video with my wash and go. It loosened it slightly, so slight that it wouldn't be noticeable to somebody who, you know, whose hair it wasn't. So um, I showed it in the last video and I'll link that for you guys if you wanna check that out, but it's just a very slight difference. What's the safest way to get colored hair without getting any damage? If you're gonna color your hair, just make sure that your hair is healthy to begin with. You're basically taking pieces out of your hair strand so it's gonna weaken a lot. So if you already have hair that's weakened or is damaged, just don't do it because it's gonna be really, probably really bad because I mean, I'm seeing a lot of difference in my hair. Um, and my hair started out really strong. It's a lot thinner now and it's a lot more fragile. I used to be able to like go like this. You know, it would take a lot of effort for me to break one strand of my hair. And with this, I can just go beep and it just breaks right off. So do you use anything new to combat the dreaded bleach dry? As I learn more techniques for my hair, I'll definitely share it. But I will say that one thing that I've been loving for my hair is argan oil, man. This colored hair loves argan oil, I'll just tell you guys that. Do you think any of your hair got damaged to the point where you would have to cut the color out? No, <laughs> no. I did at first, I was like, oh my God! But it was just how I was styling it, so now that I know how to style it, no. Hi, would you do it all over again? Or after seeing the damage, no. I would definitely do it all over again. I love it, I, I have damage and it's all good. I mean, I was ready for that sacrifice, like I said, and I would totally do it again. I would just do it using the tips that I shared in this video. It's fresh, I just feel fresher. A change is good, so yeah, I would totally do it again. How long is it now? Still the same length, but you can see here, we just have a really nice shape. We just have a really nice angular shape going down the side, so. Was your dye organic? No, it was not, Brianna. When are you going to get professionally flat ironed since you already got the color? I don't know. I don't know. I don't know if I'll ever get it freshly flat ironed. I might. I might not. It's just kind of what I feel in the moment. Would you recommend the balayage cut on someone who is transitioning to natural? Well, balayage is the type of color, the type of highlights in the placement. The cut is a diva cut. Yeah, I would recommend the diva cut for anyone who's transitioning. I think it would be cute. The balayage color, I don't know if I would recommend that to someone who's transitioning just because you already have the relaxed hair and then you have the natural hair growing in and it might just be too much might make your hair fall out so I would definitely wait for your hair to be completely natural to do the color that's just me personally Sneeze. <sighs> what are the best ways to feel confident and comfortable after coloring your hair okay, so I can answer this one for you because I was freaking out the best way to feel confident with your hair after coloring it is to play around with it if you're freaking out just do a deep condition give it some love and then begin styling it because you're probably gonna have to change your technique slightly to get the look that you're looking for so just play around with your hair that's the only way you're gonna get comfortable with it just know that it's okay if you're not liking it at first because apparently that's the reaction of a lot of people including me apparently that's very normal so just play with, with it and just know that if it doesn't look the way that you like it you can always put it up in a bun until you figure out how to work with it and then also know that your hair is gonna grow out why was it such a secret how long did the cut take and does your hair feel healthier my hair doesn't feel healthier because I have the color in it that's okay I wasn't really going there to get my hair to feel healthier I was going there to get a color and again I knew what I was walking into why was it a secret because it's always a secret. Everything I do on my channel is a secret. I just didn't want to share it until I posted my video. Is it possible to have healthy dyed hair? Hmm, I'm, I think it's possible to have healthy looking dyed hair. I mean, yeah, you could have it healthy. I think that once you go through that process of dyeing it, you're risking your health, and so it's not as healthy as it could be. There are ways that you can dye your hair using natural products like henna and indigo. It might be more slight and not as noticeable. If you want to keep the most health in your hair, if you want it to be in pristine shape, definitely you can use like a henna or something like that. How did you work up the nerve to follow through the decision to color? I don't know, I was just kind of tired of thinking about it. Like, just do it. <laughs> just do it. I mean, make sure you, you do your research and you know, you know about the risks and try and take as many precautions as possible. But if you want to do something, I say just do it. It's the same thing that I say to relaxed girls who say, oh, I'm free to go natural. You know, how do I get up the nerve to do it? I say, just do it. Just stop 
relaxing your hair and grow it out. The worst thing that could happen is that you hate it and then you can put a relaxer back in it. So it's the same thing with the colored hair. The worst thing is that you hate it and either one, you can put more color on top or two, you just let it grow out and then you learn your lesson. So I think that if you wanna do something and you really, really wanna do it, just do it. What factors made you choose chemical color over henna? I decided to do the chemical color because I cannot get the color that I wanted using henna. I really wanted my hair to be lighter. I wanted a toned color. Color. I didn't want a red hue. I didn't want it like, oh, you can notice my hair is colored in the sun. Like I wanted a color that I could not get with henna. And my hair to begin with is extremely dark. Like it's almost black. And I just, the henna was not gonna cut it. It wouldn't lift my hair, which is what I wanted. I needed the color to be lifted. Did you dye your gray hairs? No, no, I did not. Still got my gray hair. Checking Facebook real quick. Take it seriously. Is it harder to take care of natural hair that has been dyed? Yes. I mean, it's harder, but it's not impossible. It takes a little bit more time, for example. I did my 25 minute co-wash routine on my hair and it took me like 40 minutes instead of 25 minutes because I really had to take my time when I was detangling the colored hair. Is the colored hair quality and texture still dropping or has it stabilized? I'm Obama apparently, why am I doing this? <laughs> I don't understand. I feel like it's stabilized. I feel like I'm getting the hang of it, like I know what's up now. It's getting better. I feel like I didn't know how to handle it at first and now I do, so. Okay, I think we're done here. I tried to fit a lot of information in there. I'm sorry if it's super long, but there was a lot to say. I'm gonna put the stylist, Krish, her information in the description box. You guys can check that out. Thank you so much for all the encouraging comments and I'm happy that you guys like it too. I really love it and I'm happy that I did it. It's so much fun, like, no joke. It's so much fun. You guys have to do what you wanna do when you wanna do it and don't worry about whether it falls in line with any rules or what other people are gonna think about you and all this other junk that just does not matter because it's you and it's your hair and you just gotta do what you wanna do. So yeah, thanks for watching guys. I hope that this video helped. Please, please, please take these tips when you're going to the stylist. I promise you they're going to help you get what you want more often out of the visit. So hope it helps and I'll see you in the next one. Yes, it's so